What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of Ask RGT85 where I answer your questions. Um, this week I decided to answer a question that's a bit topical. Um, I don't remember the exact wording of the question, but somebody asked me basically what I thought about Nintendo's handling of the Metroid 2 remake situation and them taking down Nintendo Power off of archive.org. Now, of course, we have two different topics here to talk about, so let's just talk in general at first about Nintendo's track record with this because this is something they are known to do. Um, a lot of people have a negative image of Nintendo because of their involvement in fan projects and taking it down or whatever, and I don't necessarily think that's fair. I mean, there is the whole, you have to protect your IPs, these are your intellectual properties, these people are using you know, your characters and whatnot. So as a whole, I don't think it's as bad as people make it out to be. Now, let's take a look at the Metroid 2 situation. So if you aren't aware, there's been a remake of Metroid 2 that's been in development for about eight years, and it was finally released, and within a couple days, Nintendo took it down. And a lot of people are upset about this, and I'm kind of on the fence. Um, there are definitely two ways to look at this. Um, at the very basic groundwork of it, you know, Metroid 2 is a Nintendo game. Metroid 2 is a Nintendo, or Metroid is a Nintendo property. Samus is a Nintendo property. So I understand Nintendo's position on this. However, my sort of little gray area comes in when we have to factor in the fact that they weren't asking for money for this. Nobody was profiting off of this. This was a fan project, a remake of a classic game that Nintendo doesn't really seem to care about this franchise, and especially they don't care about Metroid 2. They've never done anything with Metroid 2, come to think of it. So for Nintendo to kind of step into this, and the only reason Nintendo stepped into this was because how big the project got, you know. Mainstream websites were talking about it, because you gotta face it, there's hundreds of fan projects that happen all of the time and really only the bigger ones get taken out. And I don't know if that's fair, because you have to look at it like this. I understand Nintendo's position on this, but think of it like this. Think of when you open up your iOS or your Android market, think of how many properties, or think of how many games there are in these mobile stores that basically either take Nintendo properties and slightly alter them, or, you know, pretty much just rip Nintendo properties off, such as Pokemon, you know, Mario and stuff, and they rebrand them and they sell these games and these games make money. I mean, Flappy Bird, it used an asset directly from Nintendo. It used an asset from Mario Brothers. So wouldn't, wouldn't it make more sense for Nintendo to go after these companies that are profiting off of their stuff instead of individuals who are just making fan games? And another thing to look at is, if Sega did the same thing, we wouldn't have Sonic Mania, which is coming out, you know, at the beginning of next year. Because the guy from Sonic Mania, Christian Whitehead, who I was not familiar with during the Sonic Mania announcement trailer, but being a, you know, good YouTuber, I looked him up, I researched him, I learned all about the guy. This guy was doing some incredible stuff. He was taking Sonic games and making basically fan games based on them. And he actually caught um, wind of Sega because they noticed how he was running a Sonic game on a, on a mobile engine and Sega actually hired him and now he's working directly with Sega and how did he get his start by making fan games and you know these were these were Sonic games that he was working on so if Sega had done the same thing you would not have Sonic Mania you would not have all these high quality Sonic um, ports to the iOS and Android so it's a double-edged sword. I feel like Nintendo may have gone a little overboard here. I can understand protecting your IPs. I can understand doing all of that. But these are fan games. No one's profiting off of them. You know, people are just passionate about this game. And the developer of the game has actually come out and said, you know, you shouldn't be mad at Nintendo for this. We understand. And to me, that's just kind of PR work. I think it's okay to be a little upset with Nintendo. If you want to agree with Nintendo or disagree with Nintendo, that's fine. You can go on either side of the coin. Me, honestly, I'm kind of in the middle. I can see both sides of the coin. It's, you know, I try to stay objective here. So I can understand both positions. I can understand why this should still be up and I can understand why Nintendo took this down. Now the other thing that's going on is archive.org got, I think it was the first 12 years of Nintendo Power put on their website so you could view them on their, on their website and you could see all the stuff and Nintendo took that down as well. This is a little stranger to me because this is more about preservation. I mean, magazines are not going to stand the test of time. They're magazines. You know, if you spill water on them, they could burn. 
Um, so this was more of a preservation thing and people are saying well maybe Nintendo's doing something with it but they really can't because a lot of the advertisements and a lot of the um, literature is based on third-party games so technically they don't own those assets they don't own a Capcom advertisement that was paid for by Capcom so I don't understand who this is hurting like there's tons of magazines that are available online that are old issues that are out of print magazines like Nintendo Power and nobody really loses anything off of it. Nintendo's not really losing any residuals off of it. So unless they're planning, you know, a sort of virtual service for Nintendo Power magazines, which would be completely stupid because the only people that care about Nintendo, mag Nintendo Power magazines are people like us, you know, the hardcore collectors. You know, I still have Nintendo Power magazines. So I don't know, that's a very, that's an even more strange decision. The Metroid situation, I can understand why Nintendo did it. I might not agree with it, and I might not like it, but I can understand it. The archive.org taking away Nintendo Power stuff, that's a little much for me. There's so much more to be worried about if you're a Nintendo. You have, you're launching a system, you know, you, you have all this stuff going on. Your home console, the Wii U, has no games for it anymore. And you're more worried about, you know, shutting down fan projects and archive.org than focusing on your own self. So, I don't know. You know, it's a little upsetting, it's a little disheartening. Let me know what you think of the situation in the comments section below. Let me know if you had a chance to check out the Metroid 2 um, remake done by the fan. And if you got to read any issues of Nintendo Power and archive.org, because I sure did. And as always, make sure you like the Facebook fan page, because I'm going to do these every week. And you could ask me any question, and maybe I'll answer it. I will see you guys next time. Thank you for liking this video. Thank you for subscribing. Later.